and welcome to Big Red Journeys. I'm your host, Big Red, and on today's odd journey, we're back here at the Delmar Fairgrounds for the Oddities and Curiosities Expo 2024 here in San Diego. This is the kickoff expo for this large North American tour. They're gonna to go to 31 cities this year, and each city's gonna have two days on it. Uh, I'm honestly excited for this one. This is one of my favorite expos to go to. This is the one, if you're a fan of the dark, the macabre, the gothic, and just a little odd and creepy, you're gonna have a great time here. We're gonna walk around, I'm gonna show you some of the vendors, some of the items that they have here for sale, the art pieces, the jewelry, the taxidermy items, even some food as well. There's a sideshow as well. But overall, we're gonna have a great time and then we're gonna end the video off with some tips and tricks to give you so that if you go to an expo in a city near you, you're gonna have a great time. So if you care to follow me on this odd journey, let's go. Well, as tradition always holds, the Oddities and Curiosity Expo is held in the O'Brien Hall here at the Del Mar Fairgrounds. Let's go in, usually to the right, yes indeed. We got the official merchandise of the Oddities and Curiosities Expo. I think this is probably its largest year ever here in San Diego. First of all, it is the first time it's ever been a two-day event. And this is Saturday, and it's quite, quite busy. I'm here in the middle of the afternoon, about 12.30 or so. Crowd level's pretty high. We'll take a look around, check out what vendors are here, what the wares are, see if anything catches my eye. There is also the sideshow with a couple performers going on today at different hours. Looks like there's one currently going on at the moment. And a couple taxidermy classes as well, one for rat taxidermy and one for entomology, which is over usually in the back wall over there. They ended up doing two taxidermy classes, like I said, one that's a rat taxidermy, that's on Saturdays, and they have an entomology one, and that's two classes each day. And because of that, I think they took up more room here, but the little sideshow where they would have like taxidermy, like oddities, like double-headed cows and a man eating chicken, a six foot tall man eating chicken was there. But that's not here anymore. So I don't know if it's specifically just for San Diego that's not a part of it anymore, or if that's gonna be for all the cities. So, so let's take a little sneak peek in there. You can see people enjoying learning how to do their different types of taxidermy. They actually provide you everything that you need for these classes. Now, of course, vendors will vary on location. There's quite a few of them that you're gonna see here in this video of the San Diego location. They will travel to a lot of other cities, including probably LA most likely. Um, but usually they kind of stay regional or kind of in their area. And they, of course, Audis and Curiosities does like to invite new upcoming artists, people who haven't had a chance to vend with them before in previous cities. So, but this is a good example to showcase what you could expect at this show. So, so really there's a little bit of everything for everyone from if you like taxidermy animals, clothing, furniture, uh, uh, candy, food, art pieces, you name it, they have it. As long as it's dark, macabre, and spooky, it's here. My friends over at Sweet Siren, friends of mine, because they, as well as I, love Disney. I collect all those pins right there. Pretty much have every single one of them. But they also mix the dark with tiki, marine life, great items. But look at these ones. They react to UV black light, glow in the dark. There's an anglerfish, a seahorse, piece of elkhorn coral, an octopus. That is really nifty. Some of your favorite movie monsters here. Including little pic little frames of them, little 3D versions of some of your favorite universal monsters. They even have an opportunity for you to take an old timey style photo on tintype. Look at that, very nice. Those are the prices right there. So you're gonna have items that come from funeral homes, people houses of those who died estate sales you know a little connection to someone else's life and people enjoy that when you just need the right bag some beautiful stained art handmade stained glass look at this a crescent moon a star but these ones really caught my eye some sort of candle holder but they look like a gothic church style stained glass windows uh, an actual anatomically correct heart in some sort of like red foil. That's pretty cool. They also have it in gold. I'm a huge fan of medical science, medical oddities, things of that nature. So I may actually pick up one of these. It really is worth, like even with the crowds that there is, it truly is worth going into each and every booth because you just never know what little treasure you're going to find when you're searching. You know, a lot of little treasures, jewelry, uh, specimens, and sometimes I've had luck where you find 
the one item that's tucked away in the corner and that's the one you're supposed to get. Matt Tatters art, this, this group is always here all the time. Now, this art doesn't necessarily speak to me, but I, I do appreciate it because I always see such a combination of multiple religions here. Everything from Christianity, Paganism, um, I've seen even Judaism here, Satanism. It's just crazy, the mixture of religions and cultures and honestly, colors. Everything is done very vividly and bright. Oh, wow, look at these wonderful things here. The little glass biomes here are decorative pieces, but they have lights that are changing colors inside of them. Various skulls of uh, certain rodents, beavers, maybe a coyote skull, rat skulls. Very beautiful. They even have earrings here with little vials filled with little baby bones. Well, not human babies, but you know, little bit, uh, bones of like rodents or some sort of small animal. We got a uh, per the announcement that just occurred. We have a show going on at 1:30, and not only that, but a special performance. But not only that, we have a special performance by the one, the only, Vita Devoy, who's actually a personal friend of mine as well too. So make sure to give her a follow. But she's about to be on here right now, so let's go check out her show. So we're gonna hammer this directly into the center of my face. Huh? Are you ready? We've done this before a couple of times. We're going to shove this into my nasal cavity. Because my mouth cavity is, you know, they're really hidden back there. But you might see them in a minute. And we're just going to hammer that guy right up there. Is that in there? Is that still your nail? It's got your L on it? Yeah. Is that still got her L on it? If it's in there? Or it might be like upside down. I don't know. I don't pay attention enough. It's really up there. Okay, just hold up. Hold on. Oh wait, there's an itch. There's an itch. It's really itchy. Oh yeah. You can hit it. You hit the spot. Oh, that's really gross. That's still your nail. It's got the yellow there. It's disgusting. Give it a huge round of applause. Three, two, one. That was an amazing show by the one, the only, the odd, Vita Devoid. Uh, she does an amazing act. I've seen her before. Like I said, she's a good friend of mine. I'm gonna put some information down. Make sure to give her a like and a follow as well too on her Instagram. Um, and if you're ever in the LA area, she does a lot of uh, cabaret and performance shows up in the LA area. And who knows, she might be at another one of these Oddities and Curiosities Expos too. But there's always some great performers on stage here at the various cities. 
um, everything from mag uh, magician acts, uh, people who do those types of things, the sideshow acts, you know, the n nail the nose or hammer themselves or do whatever, uh, contortionists, strong acts, whole lot of them. And that's one great thing about the, the expo is that you get the little sideshows like that, really fun. This is an interesting take of my childhood here. Rocco's Modern Life in very interesting forms. I don't know how I feel about this. Oh, Spunky. I am a very large fan of teas. I prefer teas over coffee. And this one is very interesting. A tea noir, Manderly Exotic Teas. What I really like about their teas is they, the blends have been smelling really nice, but they all come in like apothecary style elixir jars. That is really cool with old school style uh, vintage stickers. And the smell and the aroma has been very, very nice. My friends over at Brightside Studios always come with some very ingenious taxidermy and mountain specimens here. I mean, look at this. They actually have some of these. What, which one? Which is this one? That is a the red green Amazon, which if you're familiar with San Diego and know about the OB parrots, that's what that is right there. They were actually pets that came across on Portuguese sailors' vessels. They got loose, and now all of a sudden here in San Diego, along the beaches, they're all over the place. You need your own little, uh, what are these? Looks like an otter foot or something like that. I can't even tell. What does it say? A kangaroo foot. You need your own kangaroo foot? They got it. Uh, you need kangaroo balls? They got it. I think they're lucky. If you do that and you rub them, I think that's good for good luck. You sure about that? Some unique pieces of jewelry here. Chainmail, chainmail style pieces. I like that. Very nice. Pretty necklaces, pendants. I see some bracelets here. Ooh, a spiky heart. Last year I saw these wonderful pieces of art where they incorporate skeletons, pieces of insect entomology, even some fish right there. There is a uh, longhorn cowfish right there. But look how beautiful and how the colors react with this UV light going on there. Beautiful additions, decorative pieces and a collaboration of all different elements. I'm going to assume a hornbill. But look at the eyes right there. They actually put little ammonite shells in there. And it's also a working lamp and some sort of vertebrae of an animal. Those feathers look like uh, pheasant feathers. But just a collab mashup that really turns a beautiful art piece right there. <laughs> Probably the most popular of all the booths here in Vendors, dead people stuff for sale. There's always a line. In fact, the line zigzags twice over and goes to the other side of the row over there. All it is, <laughs> is a hodgepodge of items. I mean, we're talking about going to estate sales and purchasing items. There's pins. I see hats. I see uh, Jesus painting over there. I see a Bob's Big Boy. I see stuffed animals. I see board games. You name it. Some of you used to own it. They died and now it's up for you for sale. This vendor over here is always known for carrying a large variety of taxidermy animals, including some that at least I think are exotic. There's a, a kudu. I saw a uh, water buffalo over there, yes. Including, look at that, a juvenile hyena. Oh, they brought down the kudu right now. Look at that big boy. Look at how big he is compared to that gentleman. Wow, that is a really rare one to see. A munchuck. First of all, not only are they known for having those vampire style teeth right there, but the slits right here on the very top of their head are scent gland openings. And then there's a adult hyena right over there as well. I was actually contemplating in that little, that little chipmunk with a paddle on a canoe. Look how cute that guy is. That one is my spirit animal, raccoon going into a box of Cracker Jacks. Can't stop without saying hello to my friends over at Velvet Apparitions. 
who always have such wonderful items. I mean, we're talking about the macabre, the dark, even the humorous. I mean, it, it, she specializes in items that have to do from like funeral homes, uh, old Victorian antique items. I mean, she'll have everything from makeup cases, wax kits, uh, Victorian style jewelry, teacups, you name it, she has it. Such an eclectic collection. Look at these antique casket plaques. Now these, like you see, father, at rest, these are actual, they would be on top of the casket and be buried with them. So we don't know, maybe, maybe these were from an actual casket that got buried, maybe they're just samples, who knows. Atomic Folk Art is back. I've always been a big fan of theirs because they combine entomology as well as specimens, but in a very artistic way, usually mounting them on these beautiful picture frames. Let's take a look at these butterflies and moths. They put a little wallpaper backing on there, but look how beautiful they look with these antique bronze and metal frames. Look at those lovely displays right there on radioactive glass, uranium glass. And of course, scorpions do actually glow in the dark when they're exposed to UV light like that. So if you go to the desert, take a black light, see if you can find some of these glowy guys out there. So an interesting take on some art here in the vein of like the pinup girls of the 40s, 50s, and 60s. Interesting, I actually like it. Oh, look, it's Catherine O'Hara's character from Beetlejuice. Ah. I'm actually more intrigued by the paletas shaped right there of some of our favorite movie monsters. The art of Jordan Monsell, a gentleman whose art I do appreciate because he makes these wonderful posters that have, like this one for example, has all the triptych and, and folklore characters and monsters, Mothman, Jersey Devil, Chupacabras in here as well, two aliens, it's crazy. And then this one here of various episodes of the Twilight Zone all together, he even lets you know what each character is on his little, it's almost kind of like a Where's Waldo in a way, honestly. Anybody need a creepy baby doll on a choker necklace? They got them here. Oh, you can even get the matching earrings. In rooms create some wonderful photography pieces here. Uh, what I like about them is that they, they are masters of that double exposure technique that really gives the look of a ghost or a spectral inside these photos. Some of the world famous uranium glass here for sale. I just love the way they look with that UV lighting. And yes, it is technically radioactive, but nothing strong enough to actually hurt you. Deadly Sweets, brand new to San Diego, but I saw that they had this delicious graveyard cake. Look at how that looks. It literally looks like, I mean, look, it even comes with a little shovel to dig in and eat right there. Chocolate cake with chocolate buttercream, Oreo crumbs, white chocolate tombstone skull, and a chocolate bat. That sounds delicious. And of course they have these pre-packaged s'mores. They're chocolate dip s'mores, strawberry crunch, called the chocolate. Oh, they even have, what's this one? Circus animals attack. All sounds very delicious. Two pieces of art here caught my eye when I saw this booth. First of all, this of Dr. Ian Malcolm of Jurassic Park. Look at how he looks, Jeff Goldblum's character as a rat. But look at this one here. It's like portals he's going through, a squirrel going through one side of the tree, out the other. I don't know what's going on here, but look at it. And it's also, not only is it an interesting, unique piece of art, but it's also beautiful too. Oh, I didn't realize this. Look, there's a bat right over there, a moth. This is very well done. I really like this piece. Also, shout out to E. Bernard Designs because they put a sign here about the ethical sourcing. And that's a very important thing. I'm going to talk about it right now. So to be a part of the Odyssey and Curiosity Expo, if you do have items that are of, you know, uh, nature, you know, that's where they derive from, uh, dead animals, taxidermy animals, pickled specimens, things of that nature, all, everything to be a part of the Odyssey and Curiosities your art has to be ethically and humanely sourced. Meaning you don't kill an animal just to take its head, fur, whatever the case is. A lot of these animals come from uh, farms and they're raised for that particular purpose. Some are actually roadkill items, believe it or not, roadkill items. Uh, and a lot of them are just, you know, fetal or stillborn animals. 
um, that you know died during birth or very young in age. So everything here is sourced naturally. You don't have to worry about any sort of illegal aspects of things. Also, some items are sold and varied depending on location. Like here in California, being very strict with laws of that nature, there are certain animals, you know, things that cannot be sold here in California. So you won't be able to see those. Unlike, you know, if you go to another state like Texas or Florida, their laws are a little bit more open. Asylum Zone, back again for another year. These guys, I always love seeing them because they always come out with the Tuis from Little Shop of Horrors. I keep meaning to get one of these. I still haven't yet. Maybe this is the year. The skull of a garfish. That is an interesting piece. It's in a gyrosphere. And then there is a butterfly. If you look deep inside the skull, there's one inside there. That is a very interesting. And garfishes can actually live to be quite, quite old and very large too. I really do like the blend of natural environment elements as well as, of course, nature. You have this chameleon right here who does look like it's in the motion of getting his tongue out to capture that butterfly right there. This quail egg actually has a baby quail inside. And if you look further deep into the shell, a hundred little white topazes. These are always fun to see. Right here we have a fetal cyclops pig, of course. You can kind of see how it was the form right there in the front. And like again, with, speci with specimens like this, most likely it was stillborn. Didn't make it to birth. Look at this distinguished gentleman. Yeah, mm, very distinguished. And it's interesting because it's like a steampunk, post-apocalyptic, dystopian kind of vibe to it. Interesting, no horse on this carriage, but you got a steam locomotive front end. And some sort of crawling steampunk house. You can just imagine like those just move about across the barren wasteland. Apparently this little guy has been shopping at the Autos and Curiosities Expo because look at all his little collection got going on. I knew I couldn't leave here without seeing at least one Fiji mermaid. And there it is. That's the only one I've seen so far. Oh, look at that. Double trouble. A double-headed taxidermy little duckling. This company, Wired, makes uh, some handcrafted jewelry use, utilizing uh, recycled pieces, construction wire, rubber tires, uh, insulation, tubing, and various, oh look, you can even read whatever the heck that used to be from. Interesting. So, and of course it has a little bit of a, a raw edge look to it, kind of punkish industrial feel. Well, that's not very nice of you. Well, oh, well, same to you, buddy. Believe it or not, I've gone through the whole expo pretty much, and this is the first jackalope I've seen. That's an interesting poker game. Oh, oh, he's cheating. I saw it, he's cheating. An interesting collection of spooky bags for all your needs here. Lots of different jack-o'-lanterns of various colors. I like the, I like this color right there. It's very 50s diner-esque. And a very large rest in dust spooky carpet. There's a couple of foxes up there hanging around. I mean, it is a good rule to have. Love thy neighbor. And if not, you can always uh, beat them on the head with a bat with a blade saw next to it. Or barbed wire. Your choice. So we're pretty much done here, but I really wanted to, before we leave, uh, to give you a few of my personal tips to really help you have the best experience that you can here uh, when you come to the Odyssey and Curiosity Expo. Now, obviously, some of these may not apply to every single event, but these have applied when I've come here to the San Diego and even the uh, Anaheim LA convention ones. So, uh, first thing first is obviously buy your tickets early and online if possible. It's always cheaper to buy them ahead of time than it is day of. Usually, you save yourself about five or so dollars. Parking, same thing if it's available as well. Buy it online today uh, at the Delmar Fairgrounds. Parking was twenty dollars and I pre-purchased it the day before for $15. So that was a good amount of saving. If you are interested in buying a particular piece of item, something that's just like, there's maybe the one, only one available that's gonna be here, the earlier you get here, the higher chances of getting it because some of these guys, especially like the taxidermied animals and some of the more luxurious art pieces, there may be only one available. And if that's the one item that you really wanted, you better be the first one here to come and get it. So the earlier, the better, you're gonna have the largest selection of items. It will technically also kind of be a little bit busier in the earlier part of the morning, as well as in the mid-afternoon when we like the round of time that we got here today. Uh, that's because those are the peak times. Right now, it's about four o'clock and the level has died down significantly. So if you're not so much uh, caring about being here first, 
come a little bit later in the afternoon. You still have plenty of time to go through all the exhibits, or I should say with all the vendors, and it's a little less crowded, a little easier to see things. Uh, Food-wise and drink-wise, you're more than welcome to bring your own drinks here, uh, non-alcoholic of course. So water, I always bring a water bottle with me. Food, there may not be food necessary or good options of food depending on where you go to. So make sure to have something nice to eat beforehand. You will be doing lots of walking. I did today and I actually checked my phone. I've already walked two miles and I've just been inside this expo. Crazy, I know. Make sure to also really bring your patience. Patience is a virtue and it's really, you know, you really need it here at this expo. Uh, patient with the people. Sometimes the lines get a little bit too tight. You want to see things. You may have to. Some of the vendors will actually have lines that you have to be, and you can't see their booth until you actually get to that point in the line when you're next. Uh, sometimes there's no rules. There's just chaos, and it's all every man or woman for themselves. And you just kind of have to make do with what you got and way to get into that spot so you can take a look to see what's going on. If you are interested in any of the taxidermy classes, make sure you sign up for those as early as possible. Those things sell out really quick ahead of time before the show. So if you are interested, make sure you sign up the minute that you know you're going to go to that expo. Sign up. Taxidermy and entomology classes are going on this year. And if this is your first expo or you're going to be for your first expo, definitely come with an open mind. There's going to be a lot of things here that you may not necessarily agree with. Um, but it's, you know, it's part of the fun of being here is exposing yourself, your mind, uh, your knowledge to various pieces of art and culture and people. It's, it's really fun. I was, I'm not the biggest fan myself, personally, of some of the, uh, you know, like the animal specimens that they have here. But at least I can take solace in knowing that anything that you see here, taxidermy, wet specimens, you know, the, the fetal pickled animals, they've all been ethically sourced, humanely sourced. They weren't uh, killed for those purposes. You know, a lot of them, like I said, were uh, raised in farms, uh, died of natural causes, or whatever the case may be. So take solace in knowing that these people here are legitimate business owners, and they do care about their products and where they come from. Well, that is going to do it for today's journey here at the Oddities and Curiosities Expo of 2024 here in San Diego. I had an absolutely amazing time making this video for you. I hope you had a great time watching it. Uh, I really, truly do love this expo. I don't say that lightly. It's such a fun time. Uh, very eye-opening, very, uh, you know, inspiring in a way. Introducing people to different art, cultures, way of life. It's, it's very inspiring and it's, it's quite amazing to be honest with you. And I really can't recommend this expo enough. Um, and trust me when I say this, if you go or plan to go, please do so. You're going to have a wonderful time. But if you did enjoy this video, do me a huge favor. Give it a big thumbs up for me. Second, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Third, hit the notification bell. Then, of course, make sure to follow me on social media at Big Red Journeys, TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram for even more content heading your way. We just started 2024, so there's a whole year's worth of content heading your way, so you don't want to miss a single one of them. And, of course, from me to you, thank you, and then I'll see you on the next journey. Bye-bye now.